Welcome to Gateways to Glendale College. I'm Ann Ransford, Director of Communications Marketing and the Foundation. And I'm Dave Greenbaum, President of the Glendale College Foundation. And we have today with us uh, a very, very special guest uh, that we're happy to be talking to and have them share with you about all that's going on here at the Glendale College. And why don't you introduce our special guest to us? Okay, well, we do have a special guest today, the President, Superintendent, Superintendent, President of Glendale Community College. Uh, Dr. John Davitt, and uh, let me tell you a little bit about him. You know, Dr. Davitt's been with us for 32 years at the college. He's been the president since 1985. Um, he's done a lot of different things during his career, but I did a little snooping around to get some uh, opinions about people. What, what? And I talked to your secretary. There's no better se person than that that can tell you about somebody. We will get back and, to the office. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> And she said that John is just really a wonderful person to work for because the things that she really appreciates is the open door policy and the fact that anybody that comes in, John's there to help if he can. And he does everything he can to help people and that I thought this was really nice, she said. And one of the things is he does it in a very quiet way. He doesn't want, have to tell the world that he's helped people. But we certainly are all proud here at Glendale College to have you, John, as our president. And Thank we you. welcome you to Gateways to Glendale College. It's a pleasure to be here. John, good to have you with us. Uh, the uh, accomplishments at Glendale College uh, in the last 10 years have been enormous. The, uh, the, the growth of the, uh, the student body and the uh, expansion of all these state-of-the-art facilities here in the buildings on the campus. And uh, I'm sure you have some special accomplishments that you take great pride in the last 10 years. And maybe you can share with us some of your very, very special accomplishments that you would like to share with us. I think, Dave, um, the college has always been a quality educational institution. We've stood out for many, many years as the premier transfer institution uh, in the San Fernando and San Gabriel Valleys. But in the last 10 years, we've concentrated on the physical appearance of the campus because we think that that's an important aspect of the educational process. So we've had about seven or eight either new buildings or renovations of buildings <coughs> plus the landscaping itself and then as you know in the middle of November we'll be dedicating the new Smith Student Center and the Sierra Madre building and Plaza Vaquero which then brings the campus to a stage of completion until we begin the new Science Center but I think the physical attributes of the campus have increased people's awareness of what's going on here that it is a quality institution both externally and internally. And, and, and you know, John, I know that we had some special financing on the, that's very unique for the student center and the um, the, the bookstore. Right. Did you tell us a little bit about that? Because I know it's yeah. special. Um, there's only about two or three community college campuses in the state where the students themselves have built the student union bookstore. And that's the case here. The students have been saving for maybe 15, 20 years and so the funding for the what is called the J. Walter Smith Student Center comes basically from the students and their operations, principally the bookstore. And then the Sierra Madre building uh, was built with district money, our own funds from the college operating budget, and that's a remodel, but the student union is a brand new building and it's totally funded by the student body. Well, we keep saying, John, that uh, we have perhaps here the best kept secret in town. People only see Glendale College from what they usually see by driving a, by on Verdugo Road. There's so much behind that main administration building. Here's just one of the shots right here. What a gorgeous, gorgeous campus this is. And it just continues to grow and, and, and keep all its uh, charm. And uh, I, I know how proud you must be of what's gone on here. And we, uh, the foundation, have been inviting people up here to the campus as a tour and uh, feeding them lunch and showing the campus for an hour and we will talk about that later about how people who in the community who would like to visit the campus we'd love to show it to them. Well there have been many people from the community that have taken advantage of your tours and we're really happy that you've been doing that because it's a way to introduce the college to people who may think of it as it was 20 or 30 years ago and only see it as you say from Verdugo Road. And I, I think another aspect that I like, too, is the, the ability to tell people about community college education because I don't know that everybody understands where a community college fits in the higher education picture, and I, you do a good job of outlining that for 
our guests do. Well, we try to emphasize that um, you know we have quality transfer programs here, and every year about a thousand students transfer to four-year institutions throughout the nation. And the academic record of those students is superior to the native students, for instance, at the Cal State system at Northridge or Los Angeles or at UCLA. The transfer students that we send end up with a higher grade point average than the native students who began as a freshman. So it says something about the quality of the instruction that they receive here and the transferability of the coursework. Yeah. Do I understand right that you see the, the UC system is increasing their numbers of community college transfers now too? Right. The UC system is making a strong effort to encourage more community college students to transfer to the UC system rather than to the Cal State system, assuming that the students are going to use one of the public venues. And uh, in line with that, uh, we have been asked to identify all students who have at least 30 transferable units to UC. And they're receiving letters from UC asking them to consider a transfer upon completing of 56 or 60 units, whatever it may be, with an adequate grade point average. So they're making an effort to inform community college students of the opportunities that are available at the UC campuses throughout the state. I'm, I'm curious, John, I know uh, we're going to give you another chance to, to boast about the accomplishments, but why do you think that uh, Glendale Community College is one of the best community colleges in the state and how it stacks up to the others? I think the major component, Dave, is the faculty. The faculty here is extremely stable. Over the 32 years I've been here, I'm sure that if I held up both hands, I would not run out of fingers of anyone who is left here to go someplace else to work. So the only faculty that leave here are usually those that retire, with very, very few exceptions. So you have a very stable faculty, an academically qualified faculty, and one that wants to work with students. And I think that's the hallmark of the institution. Obviously the physical attributes and the quality of our facilities such as computers and so forth. We have, for instance, 2,200 computers available to students here at about seven oh different goodness. open labs, wow. which is more than any other community college has in the region. But that's secondary to the quality of the faculty. And for every faculty position that we have here, we may have at least 100 applicants uh, who want to come here uh, to teach here because it's known as a place with a strong family atmosphere. Faculty are generally happy here. You know, building on what you're saying, um, the job of a superintendent president is a delicate balance because a, an educational institution, unlike business, has a different kind of set of, of uh, governance. Um, what do you think is the, you know, what's, what's the key to keeping all the um, balls in the air and keeping the fabric woven together so beautifully? I think the key is, um, listening to the faculty and listening to the staff and listening to my fellow administrators to find out what their needs are, how we can make these needs viable and make them come to fruition. Uh, a lot of faculty just simply want to be heard and because we're a one college district with all administration and faculty and students and staff basically centered here in addition to our center off campus down at South Glen in South Glendale. But 95% of the students are enrolled here on the college campus and the faculty are here, the full-time faculty. So the fact that it's a small unit, I think, contributes to that. The larger the mass, the more difficult it is to maintain that kind of atmosphere because communication breaks down. You know, you've done a, a very nice job of bringing us up to where we are now talking about what has happened in the past, but let's talk a little about the future. Uh, what do you think are some of the uh, future needs here at the college? I know uh, parking is certainly one of them, but I know you have others that I think you want to share with us, and let's talk about the parking also. Uh, parking is a major problem here. We have probably less parking than any other community college perhaps in the state. Um, because when the college was founded, of course, in 1937, when we moved here from Tent City, uh, they only purchased 25 acres, and now we really only have 56 acres, and most of it is fit for goats, as you know, <laughs> the, the campus here. It's very difficult to uh, level an area to make parking. 
and students rightfully complain about the difficulties in parking and we do everything we can to encourage students to carpool and to use public transportation. Um, other needs that we have on the horizon are to center all of our student services, which are presently now in the San Rafael building. We're looking at one building to house counseling, financial aid, EOPS, and so forth. And we def definitely have to renovate our physical education facilities, which are extremely poor and antiquated. And we're also looking to construct an allied health building for our nursing program, because the nursing program is expanding and it's presently high, uh, housed in portable structures in the San Fernando Court, but uh, we have on the horizon an allied health building which would um, not only enhance the nursing program, but perhaps let us move into some other allied health occupations. How about programmatically? Do you see some, some, some directions we might be going? I know we have this new Teacher Today, Teacher Tomorrow program, which is unique um, partnership. Right, you're, you're referring to the Tutors Today, Tutors Teachers today, Tomorrow yeah. program, <laughs> um, which is in conjunction with Cal State. It's one of two in Southern California that combine both state funding and an AmeriCorps grant where students can achieve a four-year degree and their teaching credential all in one seamless mm -hmm. transition between us and Cal State Los Angeles. We're looking at upgrading some of our occupational programs because of high technology. We're hoping to expand our culinary arts program because it has a new facility, and I think you're going to hear more about that later. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, the Semarusti Science Center offers an enhancement of the science program with a planetarium and the earthquake testing station connected to Caltech and new labs and so forth. All of that will enhance our teaching of science because we're very strong in the sciences and we want to continue that way. You may not know that uh, we have the highest transfer rate to UCLA from any community college with respect to the pre-med program. We had 31 out of 32 applicants accepted last year. Wow. Yeah. Well, John, I told yeah. you before we started that the 15 minutes <laughs> that we were going to share with you would go by quickly, and that's exactly what has happened. So uh, we want to thank you for in, uh, joining us. Uh, we know that you are proud and we are proud to be involved with the family atmosphere and the family environment that you've created up here. You've been a wonderful superintendent and president and I congratulate you for a job well done. Well, thank you very much. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be right back after this message. Hey there, are you looking for a place to find great bargains, good food and fun? Well, you can find all that and more right here at the Glendale College Swap Meet. The swap meet is held every third Sunday of the month from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. and it's located right here in the upper parking lot on Mountain Street right by the 2 Freeway. For more information, call 818-240-1000, extension 5805. Make sure you mark your calendars and we'll see you at the swap meet. back with Gateways of Glendale College and Ann, tell us about our next special guest we have. Well, our, our next guest here is Victor King, who is the president of our Board of Trustees. And let me tell you a little bit about Victor. <coughs> Glendale High School graduate, 82, um, went to University of Chicago for his bachelor's and master's degree, mi uh, law degree from Michigan. Uh, currently, he's a, a um, uh, Tell me. It's a, I'm a lifetime <laughs> member of the <laughs> Alumni Association. Association. And, the, and the type of law you practice is? I'm a professional, professional liability, liability attorney. In downtown Los Angeles. In downtown uh, with a very prestigious firm. And we're glad to have you with us here today. Thank you very much. Good, good to have you, Victor. Well, I guess the most logical question to start our little uh, talk would be, tell us um, who is a trustee? What do the trustees do? How do you become a trustee here at Glendale College? And uh, give us the whole circle and scenario on that, Victor. Sure. Well, my job title right now is the president of the board of tr uh, trustees. Which includes how many? Five. Five trustees. And there are five of us, and uh, we stand for election in the municipal elections in Glendale, which typically occur in April. And uh, we're elected to four-year terms, and we try to serve as the eyes and ears of the community. Uh, the college, as you know, runs very well thanks to Superintendent John Davitt. And he does the day-to-day -day decision making along with his deans and vice presidents. So we're not really involved in that micromanagement day-to-day -day level of how the college runs. 
But when it comes to the broader policy decisions of what will happen to the future of the curriculum, what type of long-term hiring decisions will be made, what type of long-term growth decisions or uh, allocation of resource decisions will be made, they turn to us as trustees. And the way it works, we meet monthly or sometimes a little more than then. Mm. And we review agendas and budgets and receive uh, staff recommendations. And then we talk in a public meeting about how to vote on these items. And we cast our votes and we render our opinions. And then sometimes we go behind the scenes and we call up various people at the college and suggest that they look at this issue a little more closely, go back and look at this budget um, revision a little more closely because we have concerns based on our network of relationships with people in Glendale and La Crescenta. And you know, Victor, does every community college in California have uh, elected trustees? Yes, the way it works is there are over 100 community colleges in the state of California, and they're run by about 70 boards just like ours. And we're very fortunate in Glendale to have a great board that works uh, in a very unified way, partly because we only have one main campus. We have some offshoots such as our Professional Development Center and our ACCT Center in South Glendale. But by and large, most of the faculty and staff are on the central campus on, at Verdugo. With some of the other 70 um, governing districts, it's a little unwieldy because they have to deal with three or four campuses, three or four college presidents, and so forth. Uh, but because we're blessed to be very compact and very integrated, um, we work well. Well, speaking for Victor King, what motivated you to want to uh, run for the office and serve in that capacity, Victor? Well, it went back a long time ago because um, I have served as an attorney for various community colleges. Oh, okay. and, and I very much enjoyed um, defending uh, a local community college in all sorts of litigation lawsuits. And I became uh, uh, well versed in some of the education code requirements uh, of um, the position and how the Board of Trustees works by attending meetings at other colleges. So when there came to be openings on the Board of Trustees here, uh, brought on by various retirements of people who uh, had served for a number of years, uh, various people in the community approached me about running because they knew I had the interest and I had a little bit of a technical expertise in the field. So they talked to me back in 95 and I ran for election back then and I didn't win in my first try at, at election but I won in 97 and uh, luckily I have been able to use some of the things that I've learned as a lawyer to help guide the Board of Trustees in some some limited issues. Do you have particular goals this year as your presidency uh, as trustee? Uh, some things that you'd like to accomplish before your term of office is up? Well, uh, all of us trustees are very much concerned about the fiscal outlook of the college because um, we understand that if you don't balance the books and keep things well run, that you're not going to have a good college. And I think uh, this board has been particularly good about where the resources are spent and allocated. I've tried to bring some personal interest to the mix by drawing on my background as having grown up in this neighborhood. I've, I've been here for 32 years of my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that I looked at when I first joined the board, board of Trustees is where our computer surpluses were going. It seemed to me that we were disposing of a lot of our computers that we uh, felt were obsolete on campus. And for example, I was able to help redirect that through a change in board policy to take our old computers and to redirect them to the local unified school district and to the local Pasadena school district when possible so that we can spread our resources out. Other trustees bring other things to the mix. Uh, Robert Holmes, uh, uh, my colleague, uh, is very much interested in public safety and has always been very uh, much in the forefront of making sure that this is a safe and secure campus. I know that Ken Sweetnam works hard on making sure our um, athletic programs uh, continue uh, to be excellent along with our academic offerings. Mary Hamilton focuses a lot on the women's issues, the PACE program that allows people to take their classes on weekends and Friday nights. And Marty Pilgreen, being a uh, former principal at the uh, Glendale Unified School District, is very much concerned with how we work together with the K through 12 board. So as trustees, we try to bring our individual backgrounds to our decisions and to try to bring excellence to the college whenever we can. You know, I also know that we, we have a student, a, a trustee. Is that normally the case in most districts? Is there a student and are we unique in that case? And what, what is that student's uh, role uh, with the rest of you? Mm -hmm. Well, we have an outstanding student trustee, Victor Castellano, and uh, he participates in the board meetings. And this board uh, um, chose about two years ago, I think, to give him a vote so that there could actually be a recorded vote of the student's thoughts 
uh, with every decision we make as trustees. Now his vote isn't binding in the same way that ours are, is, uh, are binding, mm -hmm. but um, it's important for us to get that input because there are such, just such, so many things that we can't know about because we're not here all the time. Um, I teach at Glendale College on Saturdays, and by that, um, I learn a lot of things about what can be fixed and, and what goes right from my students. But to have a student trustee who's active in student government like uh, Victor is, um, share his insights, we can make better decisions. Uh, a key example was a, a debate that we had on campus about um, how to charge for Xerox machines. You know, we can get all the staff reports we want in the world and we can get recommendations from Xerox vendors and from management consultants and businessmen. But you really need the student trustee to tell you how the Xeroxes are being used, how they're being paid for, and what's the most sensible way to make their lives easier. And, and we value their input for that, those sort of insights. I enjoyed your comments about uh, your colleagues on the, on the board and the different mix that each one brings to the table. Hence, I think that's why uh, the chemistry with the five of you is so uh, tremendous this year and, and, and you are such an effective uh, board and I commend you for that. There is a question I want to steer you in a little different direction and it's something that we would like to get your um, uh, definition of. We keep hearing about the Brown Act. Can you explain to us and to our audience and viewers what is the Brown Act? Well, the Brown Act is a portion of the government code in the state of California, and it's something that the Board of Trustees is worried about and any elected uh, body should be worried about. And that guarantees that what we do is done in the public. Uh, the simplest formulation of the Brown Act rule is this, that although there are five of us on the Board of Trustees, at any time, only two of us can be in one place discussing board business unless it's an open meeting such as our monthly meetings before the Board of Trustees here in Crider Hall on campus. Why is that important? Because if you have a board of five people, like the City Council or the School Board or the Board of Trustees, meeting in someone's living room every other weekend, going through things to vote on, reading their budgets together, there would be no point on having a public meeting. People wouldn't see how the decisions are made, and there could be corruption or undue influence, or uh, uh, things just wouldn't be in the open. It's one of the tenets of our democracy, and particularly in uh, the state of California, that we try to air these things out. They're called sunshine laws because they bring to the sunlight and the sunshine uh, the inner workings of government. So you can be assured when you come to a Board of Trustees meeting, which tends to be on Mondays at 5 p.m., the third Monday of uh, virtually every month, um, you'll see us discussing these issues and voting on them for the first time in a substantive way. Sure, we studied the issues. We've talked to staff, we've tried to learn as much as we can about the issues, but we're not allowed to make up our minds as a board together until the public meeting. And uh, that's what the Brown Act guarantees. If we don't do that, if it turns out that we've been meeting in secret, rigging the votes, calling each other, trying to change people's minds, and, and trying to hold these meetings, then that might be a misdemeanor, or it could, could cause a lot of um, uh, investigation. And luckily, we've never had that instance on our board or to my knowledge on any part of Glendale's government. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Victor, speaking of that, you mentioned a couple of times our meetings are open to the public and they're held on the third Monday in Crider Hall, correct? Mm -hmm. At 5 p.m. 5 p.m. and anyone is welcome to, to come join us and watch those meetings because they're, that's where they're held. Right. Yeah. And you know, we had some discussion about a year ago about whether or not to put our meetings on cable. And uh, maybe one of these days we'll think about doing something like that. But I think that people in Glendale have lots of other things to watch on cable right now. Right. But to make sure that people know what's going on at our meetings, I asked when I joined the board that we put all the tape recordings of our meetings at the Central Public Library. So anybody who hasn't seen our meetings in public and hasn't uh, the time to come on a Monday at 5 o'clock, go to the Central Library, ask to hear the video, I mean the audio cassette, I'm sorry, audio cassette. Yeah. And then you can hear exactly what we've done, what we've decided on, and how we've helped allocate the taxpayers' money. Well, Victor, our time has run out on us. I, I told you that it would go by fast. You certainly are, are a very informed and uh, articulate uh, individual, and we want to thank you for giving your time to uh, be with us here today. And we want to thank you for joining us, and we look forward to the next time on Gateways to Glendale College.